Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dennis Byron, and this is another episode of The Dennis Byron Show. And in the spirit of Black History Month, I want to bring on a, a young lady who has made serious stride in uh, music as well as fashion. Lish 2X is out of New York City. She's been a part of the entertainment industry, I would say, over 10, 15 years. And uh, she recently posted a video uh, speaking about entertainers versus socialites versus uh, cloud chasers. And I thought it was important to bring her on because she's been around a lot of all of the above. And uh, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce, introduce you to Lish 2X. Lish, good afternoon. Good afternoon, DB. How art thou? <laughs> wonderful i'm doing wonderful and as i as i stated in my monologue you've been in this industry for well above 10 15 years but it's so weird to you say that because i was like uh i was in high school like 15 years ago but i did get in my first magazine when i was 15 so yeah so it was was it entertainment that's entertainment well it's it was a hair magazine so i don't know but oh, i said fashion but i was in my first wait wait i was in my first music video as a child and it was on like bt video box all of that thanks to my daddy who used to be in the music industry so very, yes very good so i want you from your own words tell every, everybody about your background and how did you become a one recording artist and two in the fashion industry um, so like a lot of artists, you know, we start with spoken word. We like to write, we just like to create, and then it turns into recording on the tracks. And, um, you know, I also, I'm an alumni of the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. So, you know, at FIT, we have like such a creative culture there where there's a whole photography department, film department, graphics department, you know what I mean? And of course, fashion. And because it's FIT, you don't have to be a fashion design student to get the fashion aspects. Like I was a business student. I studied international trade and marketing for fashion industries. I still got invited to intern for fashion brands. And, you know, I got to do a lot of fashion shows, even though um, some of the shows that I did was not necessarily me modeling. I was working at doing PR. I was like you know, running the social media accounts for like Style Fashion Week. And it's just an amazing experience. And um, I'm just happy to have been in the mix. In New York City, like you don't even have to really formally be educated in fashion. If you're a socialite, you just go outside to the events and you may, you never know, like you may just walk into a fashion show that's going on at a club or, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, well, I'm going to say New York City was just the city of endless possibilities on any given Tuesday. And not only that, it's uh, uh, Black History Month, it's also Fashion Week in New York right now. Okay. Uh, are you, yes, are you it on, is. Are you planning on take, partaking in some of the festivities? You know, I... Yes and no. It's so crazy how like our focus has changed because I've been sending a lot of castings to like my friends who are interested in modeling and actress and things like that. But I myself have not went to like any castings. I haven't reached out to any of the brands that I usually would like walk for or just, you know, I haven't. Um, and I've been supporting like other friends who've had plays this week. I have another friend who's about to do a calendar release party, which is going to be a red carpet event. You know what I mean? So it's just overlapping right now. And I'm focused on putting out new music, choreography, and all that good stuff. So, so before we get into the crux of what I brought you on for, talk about some of the music that you've released and uh, how it's how has that been for you uh, working in that space? Well. So I put out my first EP ever last year and um, in 2021, and it was amazing. Like, um, even though I did my EP release party, the first snow in New York City area, it was a blizzard that day. Shout out to Is Biscuit, because he drove two hours in a blizzard to be there from Long Island. Um, and I did it in Jersey because my publicist at the time suggested it and had a relationship with that studio's owners. Um, and I just think that, you know, honestly, you know, I went on my first tour last summer. It's It's been really good. Like, it's been a blessing. It's a slow, gruesome process, you know what I mean? Because when you are a woman and, you know, especially someone like me who covers it all up, it's it's definitely had its hurdles. But I feel like 
once I hit the stage, I forget about those hurdles. I forget about all the people with the clout, but minuscule talent. I forget about all the people who are popular socialites, who, you know what I mean, undermine what it is you got going on. Because like, this is really something that I understand. And it's something that I know. Um, and I'm constantly educating myself on how to be great at. So, yeah. So, so, so since you, you've had the opportunity to one, be in the entertainment space, but as part of being in the entertainment space, you, you encounter socialites, you know, and what is your definition of a socialite? So, so a socialite is someone who you're not the entertainer. You're not a, like you, you can't become a celebrity, but you're not like a singer. You're not a rapper. You're not a designer. You're not even trying to be a model. You're just someone who goes to a lot of parties, you know, a lot of the promoters, like promoters oftentimes become are like socialites, but you know, a lot of promoters, you know, a lot of DJs, because you're always on the scene, you may become friends with a lot of the entertainers. So you're like this popular person that's just always around and no one has a clue what it is that you do. You're just there. You're a social butterfly. However, sometimes socialites are people who own businesses. Like you could be, um, a person that, I don't know, coming out with a shoe brand and the way you are able to get these influencers and celebrities in your clothing with a very little budget is because you built relationships with these people. You know, hey, I want to give you a pair of shoes. They post the outfit on Instagram, hey, shoes by such and such. You know what I mean? So these are people who become popular more times than not more popular than their brands. Like I found out Ra Ali has a shoe brand. You know what I mean? I didn't know until I saw like some shady clip of Love and Hip Hop on YouTube. And I was like, oh, she got shoes. And now I'm looking up her shoes and like, let me support her sister. Like these are people who I believe are socialites that may also do something else, but it has nothing to do with entertainment per se. So, so I would liken a socialite to an influencer that is on social media if because they have similar correlations. Would you agree? Yeah, well, influ so socialites can be influent become influencers. Like, absolutely, because they're like, for instance, um, what's that girl's name that used to be like friends with the Kardashians, but it was like she may have slept with Trisha. I can't remember because I don't like to follow celebrity gossip too too much, but I can't think of her name right now. Black girl that's always with the Kardashians. Like she would be considered someone at first as a socialite. Now we know she has an aspiring career to do other things, but you know, initially we just knew her as being the best friend of a Kardashian Jenner. Same thing. Like people know who Rihanna's best friend is. Why? Because she's Rihanna's best friend. I have no idea. And the only reason why I can even tell you what she looks like is because that thing where she like liked the post at the neighborhood talk back in November of Rihanna being pregnant and they tried to say she confirmed it. And like, that's someone who's like a socialite, like you're at it parties. Why? Because your besties in a testy with Rihanna. Hello. So now you have all these followers because people are following you looking for that more Rihanna, you know, that more insight on Rihanna or, oh, she's friends with Rihanna. She's got to be some kind of awesome. So now she's an influencer because you have a million followers on social media and people actually care. And now because you have that following, you start to become invested in that following. So maybe you've got a fitness thing that you're going to start doing. Maybe you're going to start selling lip gloss. You know what I mean? Like you become these influencers because of your following, but you weren't necessarily that before your socialite status. So the, 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 the friend for the uh, Kylie Jenner uh, was reported. Jordan. To have had is that Jordan, right? right, Jordan. That's her name. Okay. Her name is Jordan. Her name is Jordan. Uh, but she was uh, supposedly been linked to uh, Tristan Thomas. But we see now that Tristan Thomas is linked to a few people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. and it's, 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 it's sometimes you become that's it. Sometimes you become a socialite based on becoming somebody's baby mama. Like, hold that thought for a second. We were talking about Jordan Woods. Uh, I don't know Rihanna's uh, best friend. Uh, I should know, but I don't know. I don't know why I should. I'm know, surprised but. you don't know. You know everybody, DB. You know everybody. But but my point is, uh, going into the next. Uh, line of question here. Let's talk about the cloud chasing. And I want to, I want to, um, 
the word cloud chasing has been thrown around a lot, you know, across the internet and social media platforms, you know, obviously has uh, elevated that the, the word cloud chasing. You mm -hmm. said you said in uh in one of your recent videos, no self respect on how you get it, you just want it, and I want you to explain that statement. They do anything for clout. They do anything for clout. Hey, um, what it is is just that. Like, I find it appalling that people, a lot of times, especially celebrities, fall victim of this. People will literally, by any means necessary, get their little fifteen minutes. Like, I never forgot. So, because you know, my history with Cardi, I used to know her back when, like, from the club scene, et cetera, the case may be, and her crew. There's a girl that bartended at one of the clubs that I think she danced at. There was used to be something and like they created some fake beef online, like they had beef. And, you know, I think the story was like Cardi DM'd her and saying like, what's up? Like, what's the problem? And all they wanted to do was screenshot and say, look who's DMing me. Ah, ah, ah. Now she want to, you know, make things right. And it's like, sis, there's no problem. You just want to use my name for your little 15 minutes. And that's cool but it's like why create these fake beefs or why create these fights in a club you know what I mean acting like there's really a problem when there isn't one what the problem is is that you and I have the same 24 hours in a day where we came from the same place we both from New York City we both were in these strip clubs trying to get a dollar out of 15 cents and I did something more with my 24 hours than you did. I'm in a better position. So you're using my name for the leverage and it's negative attention. Why would you want to be known as a girl that Cardi, one of the, the biggest mega stars, you know, of the last decade to come out of New York City? Like for me, when Cardi made number one, it was personal for me like posting it because it's like, yes, one of ours, a New York City bred, you know what I mean, woman got it out the mud. She's doing it. It was personal for a lot of us, you know, that right. she made it. Why would you want to be known as the person who got beef with this individual? That's stupid. It's And now it's like you're getting popularity, but now you're not invited to the cookout because a lot of us like this individual. And even the even though we may say it has nothing to do with us, we still in the back of our head, like mm, messy. Mm, I really don't want to be seen with her because I have good relationships with Ashanti, Shanice and Ashley and all of these people that are close with that individual. Why would I want to be caught up in that fire or people who, um, sleep with individuals just so they can say like that girl who tried to say she was beyond uh jay-z's mistress rather it was true or not it's like oh at least they used a good picture that was her comment under the shade room like no self-respect you know that this is a married man so even if you did get the 15 minutes of fame you were seeking even if it were true you want to go down for your little rap career as being a whore you want to go down as being someone who broke up a marriage, who disrespected, don't, don't come for me, y'all, who disrespected the Michael Jackson of our generation, the female Michael Jackson of our generation, because that's the pedestal I put Beyonce on. Don't nobody come for me in the comments. But you know what I mean? Like, is that what you really want to go down for? That's clout chasing. So guess what? You got your 15 minutes. I don't remember who you are because I didn't care about your music. I didn't care about your little scandal. In fact, I was offended and I was appalled by it. But you got your little 15 minutes. Congratulations. You played yourself. Now you're no longer invited to the cookouts. And, and to uh, to piggyback off of what you said, uh, and you use uh, Cardi as an example, I'm sure you're aware of the big case. To I big case. I want to talk about that case. <laughs> no, but, but you, you know, you, you kind of open the door. We're not going too much into it. We're just saying that as a recording artist yourself, uh, you don't use cloud chasing to climb the ladder. Or do you use cloud? Well, I'm not going to. No. No, you just said it. Socialite but, maybe, but even then it takes so much for me to get dressed and go out. Like, uh, is there a dollar for me waiting there somewhere? Like, <laughs> Why do you, you know? think? Why do you think uh, people have resulted to those type of measures to 
I mean, it's 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 even worse now than it was maybe. You know, I don't remember when I was growing up. Uh, but why do you think that is so prevalent right now? How people are really not trying to put the work in, but trying to attach themselves to others in order for them to get that shine. Because self-respect is at an all-time low. You know what I mean? Back then, it was considered shameful to be, you know, having sex with multiple men that you're not, you know, you're not married, having babies out of wetlock. All that stuff used to be frowned upon, right? Nowadays, we are congratulating people who's knocked up time and time again with no ring on their finger. We're congratulating individuals who are miserable and living their lives publicly miserably. And I think that on top of that, we use people like Kim Kardashian as an example, like, oh, she slept with Ray J, that cloud got her a show, but you forget, no, she was a Kardashian. That name meant something. That name already rung bells. That mattered. And people don't realize that she was not just the girl who slept with Ray J. Like, who is Ray J? He's not Drake. You know what I mean? Like, come on. So I think that people have a misconception of what it is to be successful. I think, I think Ray J may take offense that you he he's not put at the same level as a uh, Drake. I love Ray J. Uh, Don't get it twisted. Maybe he was like maybe he was like almost Drake of like the nineties. I don't know because you know what it is with Ray J. What Ray J is like. He's not, he's never been super consistent musically, although we love and respect him as an actor, as a talent. I love Ray J, don't please. But it's like, there's a certain level of mega stardom that comes with Drake. You know what I mean? There's a certain level of mega stardom that comes with certain brands because they built it as such. Ray J's brand is, I look at it like a family brand. We connect him with Brandy. We connect him with the Norwood family. You know what I mean? Like I look at them like a, a black empire of their own right, but differently for the newer generations. And, it, and I use that as an example because the newer generations coming up, their perception of clout is like, I'm going to get lit because of this. And then I can use this clout to get to other places. And it just doesn't work that way, especially usually for minority women. Absolutely. Well, we have to take a commercial break. We have to pay some bills here. We'll, bring, we'll be bringing this right back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, just be patient. Okay, we're back, and we're going to bring Lish back here. Lish, where you at? Uh, can you hear me? Cause, uh, I can hear you. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure we, we're here. So, uh, again, we're talking today, for those who are joining in, we're talking today about the um, uh, difference between entertainers, socialites, and cloud chasers, and how the three are mutually exclusive. Would you agree, Lish? Exclusive, yes. Mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, did you you well you st did you start out as a socialite, then became an entertainer, or was it the other way around? I feel like I was always an entertainer. Okay, um, but I did have a phase of doing. No, actually, I don't think I was ever really a socialite because I was always known for doing something. Like when I used to hang out at La Souk and stuff like that, I never forgot. Like I walked in one of the first shows I walked in when I came back to New York was a, a show that we did at a club called La Souk. 
uh, um, for Stevie Boy, his shade line. And I never forgot, we did a little body painting and we had on like ripped jeans and you know what I mean? So I was always being productive, even though I started becoming known with like promoters and stuff, but I will always try to be a part of events. You know what I mean? Not just be there clapping, you know? You also have a, um, a while we talk, you also have a a, a, a a vegan show. Can you talk briefly about that? I'm sorry. Uh, I you, did what? You have a v vegan, sh uh, vegan show. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So I have a show where I go to a bunch of restaurants that are plant-based. So if you are a vegan or vegetarian restaurant, holla at your girl. But Or it could be a regular restaurant, but you just have a vegan section. So the idea is that I go to, like Jack Thriller was my co-host for about four episodes. But the idea is that I bring on a entertainer or a socialite or just somebody in the mix as a guest host, like some type of influencer as a guest host. They come with me, they eat vegan food, they're not vegan. And um, pretty much I expose them to the, the lifestyle. I expose them to new foods and explaining different types of vegan cheeses. Oh, how's it cheese? If it is it made with cheese? Well, it's made of a potato protein or it's made out of cashew sauce. And so it's really cool. We go to restaurants, we explain like, and we've been to some really cool places. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's really fun. It's really dope. It's also on my YouTube channel. So if you subscribe to Lish 2X, you get my music videos, but you also get my Veggie Licious show. And yeah, oh, it's coming to a city near you. Veggie Licious. What is your late, the latest? Uh, what's the latest music video you have out that um, we, we want to feature it? But tell us about it. The latest video I put out is Shame the Devil, which is kind of like my most raw hip hop -y video. Cause you know, I'm I'm kind of sort of like raw, raw like yeah. I'm not no no when I say raw, I don't mean like I mean like it's like you know when I talk about it, it's like you know, I'm that girl from out your hood that's hella sassy, a little nasty, but she ain't know it because none of these jokers had me. So it's like I'm talking that talk. And I'm showing you all El Barrio, Spanish Harlem, Yato Sabe, you know? I'm showing all of that. And it's very hip hop and rap. You know what I mean? It's very different than a lot of my other. I just lost your, I lost your sound. It's just different and more edgy than like a lot of my other videos. Completely okay. different. Any final words? Listen, y'all. They do anything for clout, but don't let that be you. Um, if you are an entertainer, if you are talented, just be consistent. I think that one of the biggest flaws is a lot of us, we're not consistent. It costs money to be consistent, but consistency and hard work sometimes will outbeat the talent. Okay. Some people don't even care if you're good or not. They just like watching you. So be consistent, go outside, socialize a little bit, but not too much, only to the things that matter most. And, um, Stay away from drama. You know, these circles get smaller and smaller the higher up you get. Absolutely. And well, ladies it. and gentlemen, Lish 2X, you can follow her on all social media platforms at Lish 2X. And uh, Lish, thank you very much. Thank you. So, guys, I had to bring someone else in to kind of put some, some uh, perspectives around this, how this entertainment, this entertainment space and I say entertainment because most of these platforms are thriving off of entertainers and they create content around entertainers. And a lot of times it, it can be easy to fall in the realm of clout chasing off of entertainment. So I, I, I just wanted to bring someone in who, who's actually in the business who can share their perspective. And I think Lish accomplished that today. Uh, this is, you know, we're going to have multiple different guests on. Some are going to be really famous and some are going to be rising that ladder. But uh, in, the, in the spirit of Black History Month and Fashion Week, we want to thank Lish for coming on the platform. I'm Dennis Byron and watch for our next episode of The Dennis Byron Show. Thank you.